Basic Pharmacology. Pharmacology is the study of drugs. In this particular video, we're looking at pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and the effects of medication. They may be the therapeutic effects or the desired effects, side effects, and adverse effects. Now, pharmacology also has to do with families of drugs and drug classification and routes of administration, but we're going to get to that at a different time. The administration of drugs is one of the most important activities that nurses perform. So nurses have to understand pharmacokinetics versus pharmacodynamics. Pharmacokinetics means what the body does to a drug and pharmacodynamics is the action of the drugs on the body. So pharmacokinetics, how does the drug get into the body, processed by the body, and excreted from the body? Pharmacodynamics, the action of the drugs on the body. What is it that the drug is doing? This has to do with desired effect. What is it? The we give the body this drug and the drug does something to the individual. What is it? That's desired effect. Why are we giving it to the person? Pharmacokinetics. This is a branch of pharmacology and again it deals with determining the movement of drugs into and out of the body. The pharmacokinetic processes include absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Absorption. This is the process by which a drug is made available to the fluids of the body for distribution. How does the drug get into the body? That has to do with route of administration. Is the person swallowing it or is it being injected into them in some way? Does it need to be digested by the GI tract? Well, yeah, it does if they take it by mouth. And the bottom line is, with absorption, the drug gets into the bloodstream. One way or the other, the, the drug is getting into the bloodstream with absorption. So absorption makes the drug available to the body for distribution. Distribution. Once the drug is in the blood, it travels throughout the body. It travels through blood vessels, mostly, and blood cells. Some of the things in the blood will make a difference in how the drug is distributed. Does this particular drug, ha drug have to bind to protein? Well, maybe there's other things in the blood that are competing for that protein and so the drug can't combine. So those are some of the things that in later pharmacology you're going to have to think about. Metabolism involves the breakdown of the drug, transformation, getting it ready to be excreted from the body. And that's done mainly through the kidneys and the liver. And then excretion has to do with um, you know, the urine and the feces itself. Pharmacodynamics. That's the action of the drug on the body. And it's the pharmacokinetics, when we're talking about that, we're talking about desired drug effect mostly. Yeah, we've got some side effects we gotta think about here. But we're thinking about why are we given this drug? What is the what is this drug doing to the body? As an example, if the drug inhibits prostaglandins, it's going to lead to less swelling and less pain. It's the nurse's responsibility to monitor the patient to determine if the desired effect of the drug has been achieved. It's our responsibility as nurses to look at did the drug work or not. Drug effects. Once a drug is given the nurse must be mindful of the desired effect of the drug. Some people call that the therapeutic effect, the side effects, and the adverse effects. 
Now, the d desired effects are why are we given this drug? What did we intend it to do? For instance, if a person has a fever and we give them aspirin, we intend for that aspirin to decrease the person's temperature. But drugs typically have side effects and adverse effects. But there is no universally accepted definition of the difference between these two. I'm going to talk to you about some of the things that are commonly accepted to be the difference between these two. Well, first of all, this slide you can see everything is the same. Both side effects and adverse effects are unintended. That's not why we gave the person this drug. Now they may the side effects and adverse effects may be insignificant or they might be dangerous. These effects can occur immediately or months later. These are secondary effects. This is not the primary reason we gave the drug. Here are some of the differences between side effects and adverse effects. Now side effects, we know people get them. They're anticipated. If you read the bottle and tells you about side effects, a lot of things cause people to be nauseous. So the side effects are known and expected to occur in some people. The adverse effects are rare. Harm is caused with normal use of the drug at the normal dose. And these effects, these adverse effects, are, should be reported to the FDA so the FDA can study that further and see is this really a dangerous drug, do we need to take it off the market? Or do the benefits outweigh the risks? Or who is it that's really uh, at risk to getting this adverse effect? Nursing implications. Okay, we gotta ask the person, have you taken this drug before? And did you have any ill effects when you took it? We need to tell the, the patients um, why are they taking it? What do we expect to happen? How is it going to make them better? And then we're also warning them about the common side effects. All right, let's, let's go a little bit into an example and we'll talk about aspirin. Aspirin was chosen because it's a common drug and most people just take it without really thinking about it. But it's a drug that has many side effects. And there are some people who are actually allergic to this drug. Okay, pharmacokinetics. This drug is taken by mouth. It's digested in the stomach and absorbed in the small intestines. It's then broken down and excreted through the liver and kidneys. The pharmodynamics. You know, we give this for pain relief. It will cause pain relief or analgesia. It's going to reduce fever. That's called an antipyretic effect. It's used to prevent and bring down swelling. That's anti-inflammatory action. And it's an anticoagulant, which will help prevent clots. Remember, pharmacodynamics are closely tied to de desired effects. Aspirin will cause inhibited prostaglandins, which is then going to lead to decreased swelling and pain. This inhibition of prostaglandins is also going to lead to vasodilation. Remember somebody has a fever, they look red? Well that's superficial vasodilation and it leads to heat loss and therefore will bring down the person's temperature. Aspirin also inhibits platelet aggregation, which means that they have less clot formation. Now, common side effects are ringing in the ears, black tarry stools, that means they're bleeding in the GI tract, nausea and or vomiting, upset stomach, and drowsiness. Aspirin requires the liver and kidneys to be functioning properly to excrete it from the body. So remember and monitor. If the patient has liver or kidney damage, the side effects and adverse effects may be dramatically worse. If we give this person aspirin for fever, it's the nurse's job to monitor the temperature. Is it working? Is the aspirin bringing the person's temperature down or to normal or at least bringing it down some? 
if we give a person aspirin and they happen to be on blood thinners or have a bleeding problem, we really need to be monitoring for signs of bleeding. That could be bruising, blood in the stool, and any other signs of bleeding.